activity at this early hour. We are seeing 94 eastbound continuing to build between Rogers and Maple Grove, but looking a little bit farther northwest, still fairly quiet. When you see that green, you know we're still cruising at 55 to 60 miles per hour to the northeast. Same goes for this section of our metro area. The Forest Lake split getting a little busier, headed southbound drivers on 35W and 35E, though still managing to squeak out that speed limit as well. Something in the construction zone of I-94, that resurfacing area, still some construction related restrictions. One of those is that the 94 eastbound ramp to Huron Street remains closed. It will not open back up until tomorrow evening. The South Metro in general right now still looking easy going. So if you're coming from that area, no problem. But over the weekend, prepare for 94 is closing between Highway 100 to 212. That'll be Friday night until Monday morning. I'll continue to remind you that today and tomorrow. That could be a big one. We're going to go now to weather talking to Keith Marlin. Good morning, everyone. A happy Thursday to you as you're traveling around the Twin Cities area today. Hopefully we won't see as many crashes as we did yesterday. We're finally into that winter driving mode transitioning and with that comes some spin out accidents. We often see when it gets this chilly that some of that precipitation that maybe fell days ago still creating some issues. 694 35 W. see some of that snow on the side there, but the interstate looking just fine. We do see that traffic building. That's sort of the theme right now around the areas. We're seeing more activity, but with no crashes, no major delays at this hour. Highway 10 eastbound. That's where we see some heavy traffic on the north side of town. This is at Round Lake Boulevard. That stretch between Anoka and Coon Rapids. Where we tend to see things get started a little bit early. 94 that interstate mostly heavy traffic in the southbound lanes. We're seeing this at 42nd Avenue and you can even see a little bit of that shiny stuff on the shoulders there. Be prepared. We don't want anyone just slipping outside the line just a little bit, just enough to cause your tires to lose a little bit of control. I think that's maybe what happened to a few people yesterday and right on 994 near 57th Avenue near that area is some type of fresh spring that was leaking some water up onto the roadway yesterday, actually creating some screen so far in many areas, but 35W southbound. We're seeing some of the color popping up near the Highway 10 Junction, the Northwest Metro traffic building there as well, but as I mentioned so far, we're not seeing any major delays, but of course I'll be keeping you posted throughout the morning when those things pop up. Guys, over to you for now. Oh, thanks so much, Kels. Keith, that chilly weather out there is certainly preserving some of the ice we have on our shoulders, ramps, those city streets. So be prepared. We don't want to see anyone slipping just because they get a little bit onto the side of the shoulder. We do have one crash already reported, reported this morning, not here on 52, but we are seeing that traffic building heading northbound towards St. Paul, but the crash reported on third this is up north of the Forest Lake split at Highway 97. No injuries reported. We do see some heavy traffic passing alongside this accident, but it's early enough where hopefully we'll get this cleared before we see any major jam ups. The Forest Lake split tends to be a bottleneck area since drivers are taking that 35 southbound path and then branching off to 35E and 35W. Sort of a southbound traffic continues to build now slowing just a bit at Brockton Lane, but for the most part with that green there, we know we're moving at about 55, 60 miles per hour. Generally speaking, Highway 10 and eastbound traffic continues building as well, especially through Coon Rapids, 35W southbound at Highway 10, that junction reduced speeds just a bit, just by a couple miles per hour. We're not seeing any major slowdowns. 94 westbound at St. Paul still flowing nicely. 52 northbound, as I showed you, we do have plenty of ice on the shoulders and some narrow lanes, it feels like in that area. So as you make the path from Invergrove Heights up to St. Paul, just be aware that if you end up going a little bit into the shoulder, you just might find yourself slipping a bit. So we're not out of the woods yet, even though you don't see the snow coming down, Tom, it can still mm -hmm. be a little slick You're on right. the roads. Yep, and I noticed that today on, on uh, off ramp. You gotta be careful. Yep. All right, thank you. Morning to you. Thanks for waking up with the Fox 9 Morning News crew. I'm Kelsey Sobe and keeping the eye, keeping my eye on the roads for you. And we're seeing a 35W southbound traffic building here at Lexington Avenue. We're seeing the first signs of a few brake lights here and there as you get a little bit farther south to Highway 10. But right now, probably the only major Major slowdown we're seeing, and I wouldn't even use the word major, is around this crash on 35 at Highway 97. This is up by Forest Lake, even north of the Forest Lake split where 35 branches off to 35E and 35W. And be prepared on some of the shoulders on those highways and interstates. We do have some icy patches, so if you get a little bit out of the line, you could be faced with losing a little control of those wheels. This look at Wisconsin on 94 Hagen Street, that jam cam showing westbound traffic heavy as it approaches the Hudson. We're cruising at the speed limit, 55 miles per hour or greater in some areas. Six 94 westbound traffic continues to build from 35E to 35W. We do have some heavy traffic on 35E as you go southbound from 36 into St. Paul, but nothing out of the ordinary as I've been looking on the traffic cameras. Looks fairly typical. 169 southbound traffic getting heavier and heavier as time passes, but until 7 o'clock, we probably won't.
won't see any brake lights going on there either. 52 northbound traffic building into St. Paul. Same goes for 35 E and in the southwest metro. Things still looking pretty good. Tends to wake up a little bit later. I have some construction news that will impact your ability to use 494 over the weekend. That will be coming up in about 10 minutes. But for now, a quick break. Good morning to all of you. We're checking out the roadways and it's looking like it's getting busier out there to be expected at 640. We're going to continue to see the congestion out there building until 7 o'clock. Well, that's really the heart of rush hour. Here's Cedar Avenue, Diffley Road heading northbound. We do have a he heavy stream of traffic. Speed's not quite reduced yet, but we'll get there. Here's a look at 35 in the Forest Lake area. This is just north of the Forest Lake split. This is our only crash reported so far this morning being worked on and it's far enough to the side. It looks like drivers still able to cruise past there without trouble, but keep in mind we do still have some icy patches on the shoulder, sometimes on the bridges and ramps. We don't want to see any accidents. We are in a winter driving mode. Even if you don't see the precipitation coming down, we do still have some slick spots at times. This is 94 101st Avenue, so that eastbound traffic 95th Avenue continuing on down to Highway 96 36 westbound speeds reduced between 35 E 35 W eastbound traffic looking OK. It's really the westbound stuff that's starting to get a little uh, crowded out there. 94 westbound into St. Paul still cruising right along 61 northbound between 494 and 94 though. However, we are seeing speeds of more like 35 miles per hour to the southwest Metro Cedar Avenue. As I showed you in the jam cam, we're seeing that traffic heavy between 35 E and the Minnesota River Bridge, the heaviest traffic on 35 W from the Burnsville split to the Minnesota River Bridge. And in the same area over the weekend, things are going to get a little different out there. This could be a major change for some of you who use 494 stretch of it between Highway 100 and Highway 212 will be closing in both directions between Highway 100 and 212. That starts Friday night at 10 p.m. through Monday at 5 a.m. So that's definitely something you want to take note of. A lot of you travel that route and it will impact your weekend travel. So I'm starting the reminders early and I'll continue to remind you until it happens. Guys. <laughs> All right. There will be some reminding from Kelsey. Yes. 642 now. The icy spots, icy, and we have a crash right now that's really slowing things up on Highway 55. If you're heading in the westbound direction near Highway 110, you're going to want to try and get out of that pathway if possible because we have a crash involving two vehicles. They're straddling the roadway here, and I saw a semi try and go through here. If you'd seen it too, you would have been on edge. It squeezed through. It maybe even hit one of the cars on its way. It was hard to tell, but here's the deal. You, the driver heading out the door, it's going to be a major delay for you, so I'd avoid it if you can. Again, that's 55 westbound here near the Mendota Bridge. Checking out another spot where we had a crash earlier this morning. This is 35W at 98th Street. That crash has been cleared, but we see those slowdowns persisting. We're in the heart of rush hour now. It's not, that's where we have that crash on 55 westbound that's straddling the roadway and really slowing things down to prepare for things to continue to get worse before they get better. Zooming now to the Northeast Metro 35W southbound heavy traffic 694 between Edgerton and Rice Street on 36. We have heavy traffic, so a lot of the typical spots, but I think it's right now that 55 spot we want to focus on for those of you who are going to be traveling shortly. Guys, over to you. All right, thank you, Kelsey. Just waking up and joining us. Here's a crash you'll want to know about if you're heading out on the roadways. This is a tight squeeze on Highway 55 heading westbound as you approach that Mendota Bridge. This is right where 110 and 55 come together. A crash at one point had two vehicles, one on either side. It was a very tight squeeze. I watched a semi eek its way through. Right now, we are seeing some major delays as you approach that area of 55 westbound, so be prepared. You may want to avoid it if you have that option. 35W northbound still slow going at Highway 13. Traffic backed up south of the Burnsville split due to a crash earlier at 98th Street. Plus, at 725 or in the heart of rush hour, you'd see a lot of stop and go conditions in that region anyway. 35E northbound at Pennsylvania Avenue. We have a crash pulled over to the side, and this is a good camera to show you that we still do have some of that snow and ice on the shoulder, so you still have that chance if you get biz on 55 westbound. It's in Mendota Heights, and we do see some oranges and yellows a little bit brighter than we normally would, indicating the speeds have been reduced more than we normally would see them. 35W southbound continues to be slow from Lexington. Avenue down south to 694 36 westbound still heavy traffic stop and go conditions between 35 E and 35 W looking around in other parts of our metro area. We are seeing conditions much like we are in the heart of rush hour because we are. I'll be back in about 15 minutes with more. But for now, let's get to M.A. Roscoe in the Metro, right? The one on 55 westbound. Good news is that it has now cleared, although we are still seeing that traffic. It's at Highway 110 in Mendota Heights. Traffic still backed up. I'll show you where that is on the map in just a moment. But first, let's get to a few other congested areas. This is 494 westbound at Cedar Avenue. Westbound traffic heavy really all the way across the board, all the way as far west as Highway 100, 169. So be prepared for the slowdowns. It's it's pretty expected. The 494 corridor would be busy at this hour. 
Cedar Avenue, we do have a crash at Killebrew, so be prepared for some slowdowns here, although we do see some reduced speeds, no stop and go conditions kicking in quite yet. 35E northbound at Pennsylvania Avenue, we have a crash here, pulled over to the side, but still seeing those speeds coming down just a bit, and we are still seeing some slick spots out there, especially night, and we see the slowdowns. Going to our map, let's check out the Southeast Metro. That's where we had that crash at 55 as you approach the Mendota Bridge. It was two, two different vehicles involved in the crash, one on either side made for a very tight squeeze, which means now we have traffic back up to Mendota Heights Road, but right at that scene now traffic moving again, so hopefully we'll see things improving in the Northwest Metro again, probably the worst spot right now. 169 southbound 494, though those stop and go conditions get underway at Bath Lake Road, continuing to Highway 55 94 southbound at the junction of uh, 94 at the junction of 694 moving southbound. Also slow going as well, so we're in the heart of rush hour to be expected. We'd see some slowdowns. Of course, those crashes are making this a little bit more difficult and coming up in about 10 minutes. I'm going to tell you why part of 494 will be closing tomorrow. Let's get now to weather and Keith Marler. Fun Thursday in the studio. I hope you're having fun this morning as you're getting ready. Thinking about heading out the door. Well, we're seeing the sun up a little bit in the sky, enough to light your way, and it might be a slow way for those of you 694 eastbound at 35W. That junction traffic slow going most definitely. We also have a few crashes out there. Yes, we do have some slick spots on the shoulders, ramps, bridge decks that contributing to a few of our crashes, but this one 35E headed southbound. There's accident reported at Arlington Avenue, so we're seeing the southbound traffic slow going from 36 westbound where it merges with Highway 110. That's because there was a crash earlier that's been completely cleared, but still we have traffic backed up to Mendota Heights Road. Looking to the Northwest Metro 169 southbound heavy traffic speeds 15 to 34 miles per hour from Bass Lake Road on south to 394. There was a crash at Bass Lake Road. It was in the northbound lanes, but if you travel 169, you know there could be activity in either side and it just gets things to slow down. Looking to the northeast, 35W southbound traffic backed up to 95th Avenue, slow going speeds all the way to 36 and 36 itself slow through Roseville headed westbound. Pretty typical though in that area. 35W northbound not gaining much speed between the Burnsville split and the Minnesota River Bridge. 494, the crosstown active at this hour and part of 494 is closing this weekend. I'll get to that coming up shortly. We're going to take a quick break. Stick with us for some of that potential for slipping. Let's look now to an area where we had a crash earlier on the Crosstown. It was at Cedar Avenue. Traffic didn't get backed up too badly. And here at Penn Avenue, slow going traffic at 808. Not totally abnormal. At least we have that sun shining down. It's nice to see that. We'll check out an area we're still seeing a backup from earlier this morning. That was westbound at Highway 55 near the Mendota Bridge in the junction of Highway 110. We still have slow moving traffic from Mendota Heights Road up to the Mendota Bridge. So prepare for that. The crash that made that get backed up has been cleared, though, as I said. So hopefully we'll see things improve. 35W southbound. Still seeing that bright orange about 15 20 miles per hour from Lionel Lakes down south all the way to Roseville. Checking out the northwest 169 southbound, still slow traffic between New Hope and 394. Plymouth congestion on 494, but at least a little bit farther north. Northwest at 94, that junction of 94, 494 starting to clear up a little bit. 494 westbound on the south side of town, heavy between Cedar Avenue and 35W. The crosstown still very active. Now there is a piece of 494 that will be closing over the weekend. That is between Highway 100 and Highway 212 that will close Friday at 10 o'clock. It will remain closed until Monday morning at 5. We'll open back up in time for the morning rush hour, but this is obviously a highly used area. Just want to make sure you have the heads up before you get there this weekend and run into some trouble. We're going to talk now about the weather. It's a little chilly out there, but we're seeing, seeing still some heavy traffic on 35 northbound. This is 35W at Diamond Lake Road. That's where traffic starts to slow and continuing on into the downtown area. Highway 100 in both directions, still heavy traffic at 27th Street. Things starting to ease up out there, though. It's 830. We'll continue to see things winding down. Most of our uh, congestion concentrated around the downtown Minneapolis area. We do have a stalled vehicle on 694 at Stillwater Boulevard looks like drivers able to pass by that without too heavy stuff is concentrated toward the downtown Minneapolis area that goes for 94 southbound 35 W southbound 35 W northbound that whole area very active 394 heading eastbound that is slow moving. We do see some reduced speeds a little bit farther southwest 494 westbound between Cedar Avenue and 35 W. That's the heaviest traffic in that area. The crosstown still some bright orange here between 35 W and 169 indicating speeds of about 15 to 20 miles per hour in some areas. Now 
Now, over the weekend, 494 will be greatly impacted. In fact, a stretch of it will be closing tomorrow night. That may impact quite a few of you, so I want to make sure we're letting you know with some notice. That stretch is between Highway 100 and 212. That will close Friday at 10 o'clock, not to reopen until Monday morning at 5 a.m. So it won't impact your typical weekday morning commute, but obviously when you shut down part of the interstate, it can get a little complicated. All right, that's it from the world of traffic for this morning. So let's toss it over now to Alex and Dale in his shiny boots. Okay. Yeah.